Open your Bibles to Jude chapter 1, please. Jude chapter 1. I'm going to start off with a bang. This is going to be very interesting right here. Let's talk about this place. Habitation at Jude chapter 1 and verse 6. Jude chapter 1 and verse 6. So the Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils. Right. And the Bible also says at 1 Timothy 4 and then at 2 Corinthians 2, we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in the last days we are to be aware of what Satan's doing so that we don't fall prey into his wicked system. Jude 1 verse 6 You'll notice right here that the fallen angels, they left their own habitation so that they can live among the sons of men. These beings, they rebelled against God on, on what he's created and what he's given to them. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He had reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So you'll notice right here, that these fallen angels, they left the place that the Lord has reserved for them, and they went into their own way. Now, this is very interesting, is that when these fallen angels fell from their habitation, so they have no place to go. Now, think about this. We're going to look at Job chapter 38, Job chapter 38. When these fallen angels fell from their own habitation, you know what the Bible says? The Bible shows some interesting verses. When they fell from their habitation, it's very interesting how Webster's 1828 dictionary mentioned about this habitation. Yeah. This is pretty surprising to me. You know what Webster's 1828 dictionary said about habitation? The stars may be the habitations of numerous races of beings. Very interesting. That's what Webster's 1828 Dictionary defined it as. So, there's something about these fallen angels that are going to be connected, go to Job 38, are going to be connected to these certain types of stars. Yeah, that's crazy. Yep, let's go to Job chapter 38, verse 7. Now, notice what the Bible talks about these sons of God. Notice what they're connected to, these sons of God. Look at Job chapter 38 and verse 7. There's some kind of synchronization, some kind of connection with the stars, planets, with these fallen beings. Notice what the Bible says right here, Job 38 verse 7. <clears throat> when the what? Morning stars sang together, <clears throat> and all the sons of God shouted for joy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Notice right here what's very interesting is that if this is going to be defined as beings that inhabit other kinds of stars, what's really interesting is that Job chapter 38 and verse 7, it showed you that when the angels sing, who are singing? The morning stars. Angels singing equals morning stars singing. Now, can I show you something even more that's wild? If you, there are, there's a lot of interesting things online where it shows these stars have certain sounds to them. And when these stars have certain sound, it seems like that they're playing music as well, which is very, very interesting. So a lot of people who are interested in studying this kind of stuff, they find out that these morning stars have certain sounds to them, and everyone has their own unique type of music, unique type of sound. Go to Revelation 12 and Acts 13. Revelation chapter 12 and then Acts chapter 13. That's why, isn't it interesting, that these angels, that these sons of gods, they can be directly connected to stars and some types of planets. So these kinds of stars and planets can be directly connected to each particular fallen being. This is very, very interesting. There's like some type of connection here. So a synchronization of a star with a being, a place with a being. 
Now, look at this. Let's look at Revelation chapter 12, and we will read verse 4. And his tail, that's Satan's tail, drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. But look who this is referring to, these one-third of heaven that's being cast out. These are angels, the fallen one. Verse 9, and the dra great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. There's that famous story you heard about one-third of the angels rebelling against God. But that did not happen at Genesis. That happens in the future tribulation. Yeah. I bet you didn't hear that before in churches. A lot of churches, they get their stories wrong. Yeah. So you'll notice right here that, again, you see this place connected with a being. And if that ain't enough, look at Acts 13. Notice these gods are connected to these type of names, which NASA will claim that these planets exist. Look at Acts chapter 13 and verse 11. Acts chapter 13, and we will read verse 11. Uh, let's see right here. Uh, no, I uh, wrote the wrong verse again. Uh, I usually have that bad habit of writing the wrong verse. So it's not chapter 13, it must be chapter 14. Yes, chapter 14. See, one chapter, you know, makes a big difference, amen? <laughs> All right, so we're going to go to Acts 14, and then we also saw Revelation 12, where there's a synchronization with place and being. So could it be that when these fallen angels left their own place, you know, they're also promised some type of different kind of being as well? Satan, he wanted to be above God. He wanted a different kind of uh, being as well. Maybe he promised the same with these fallen angels. So it's not enough what they have now. Look at Acts chapter 14 and then uh, verse 11. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying the speech of like, uh, like Caonia, the what? Gods are come down to us. But notice which names are taken after. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was a chief speaker. Isn't it interesting how NASA, who consists of a lot of Freemasons and occultists, will name certain so-called planets after what? Satanic gods. There's something connected here. But this will also make sense why the pyramids, did you knew this? The pyramids... There are openings in the pyramid that directly connect with the star and the so-called planet. It would directly connect, directly connect, like to a T. Bible believers have always taught it must be the sons of God. But think about it. Why would sons of God do that unless they think that this particular star is connected to them? And then they, that's how you get the worship because you're worshiping my star, my so-called planet over there. I mean, think about it. Why, why would NASA name certain so-called planets after these names of these gods? There might be something more here. There might be something more here. I can't claim to know what, what's going on in the mind of NASA. I mean, no one knows everything what's going on. I just know that there are some things that you are skeptical of. But go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. If you think that's interesting, now let me show you something else with you then. What does this have to do with you? This is really interesting. You know who is also likened to the angels? But we're a metamorphosis. We're a, a higher advanced state than them when uh, we die and go to heaven. Saved believers are going to be the same thing like them. Look at Matthew chapter 22, and we will read verse 30. Mm, yeah. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. So notice that we do believe in a rapture, amen? amen. All right, yeah, you better believe there's a rapture, otherwise you're going to miss this out. A lot of people want to miss out a blessing, man. You don't want to miss out a blessing. This is, why is the rapture so important, Pastor? Because it 
it's going to rob you a blessing here. The blessing is this rapture, it's only because that this rapture occurs that we get some kind of change in our state. That's right. And we're going to be like the angels, but more than that, we're going to be an evolved, advanced form of the angels. Let's look at Daniel 12. That's why, think about it, if we're going to be similar like the angels, will we have also a connection with the stars and certain planets out there? Yes. Look at Daniel chapter 12. This is interesting right here. This is very interesting stuff. I believe we're going to spread out throughout the firmament. I believe that we're going to all populate, spread out throughout all the advanced space of the universe out there. Because God has given each and every one of these uh, planets and stars connected to us. That's what you're going to find out. That is awesome, don't you think? Now, let's look at some verses here. Daniel 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the what? Firmament. See that? And they that turn many to righteousness as the what? Stars forever and ever. You think that's wild? This is based on what? The resurrection, right? At verse 2. See, it's based on when we get this rapture state. Now go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Yo, yeah, you better believe there is a rapture, man, because uh, you're going to miss out, man. The Lord has given all things. When he meant all things, he meant all things. Thus, he creates a new heaven and a new earth at Revelation. Amen. Boy, it's going to be great. It's going to be wild. Let's look, at Revela uh, let's look at right here at 1 Corinthians 15, verse 41. Based on our rapture. This is a rapture passage, right? Uh -huh. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Notice all different kinds of stars. So also it is the what? Resurrection of the dead. That King James Bible ain't boring, man. That King James Bible will just blow you up every single time. Amen. Yeah. Look at that. B based on our rapture, man. It's not just being similar with them. We also will have a direct part with this, some kind of connection with this. That's why I look at 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3. That's, good stuff. That's why, guess what? We are going to inhabit the universe. Oh, I don't believe that. Well, look at 2 Peter 3, man. 2 Peter 3. And then uh, I, I'm going to also turn to Isaiah 40 as well. Isaiah 40. You know why God created this heaven? He created this expanse thing in outer space and the universe. You know why he created all those things? It's for you to inhabit and to populate. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3, and we will read verse 13. Nevertheless, we, right? Us, right? Us, we believers, according to his promise, so he cannot break it, look for what? New heavens, plural, and a new earth. See, the whole universe. Wherein what? Dwelleth righteousness. Who's going to dwell there? Go to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. Once more. I'm going to fire ahead. Verse 22. I'm going to read it ahead now. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants, the inhabitants of that earth, thereof are as grasshoppers. Now look at this. That stretcheth out the heavens. See that? It's stretching it out. It's going to expand. As a curtain and spread it them out as a what? Tent to dwell in. Wait, pastor, it sounds like he's expanding this. That's right. This thing is going to expand. And as this thing expands, it's, uh, we're going to populate this thing. And his kingdom thus, go to Isaiah 9, literally has no end. Go to Isaiah 8, Isaiah chapter 8, Isaiah 8. Why did the Bible say God has to increase his government? Increase. Because he's making it bigger and bigger and bigger. Look at Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 7. The Bible says now, uh, oh, I keep giving, I'm on a roll with wrong chapters. Amen. All right, is it Isaiah 9? Yes, Isaiah 9. Isaiah chapter 9, apologies. So Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 7 shows it's an increase, increase. His government increases. 
The Bible says right here, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be what? No, no end. end. It's not ongoing for eternity. How many of you want that rapture to sound, man? How many of you want to go to heaven right now, man? That, that God Almighty of ours, man, he's going to, his plan is unlimited. The best is yet to come, more than meets the eye. What God hath prepared for them that love him, as 1 Corinthians chapter 2 stated, literally. What a God we serve, man. What a God we serve.